I'm Scott L. Miller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. Today, I'm going to explain a little bit about why, while Bitcoin is completely legal and accepted in Nicaragua, nobody cares and no one uses it, and no one's going to start using it, and suggesting so just indicates how much you're disconnected from the market. It's an important thing to understand because we get told this on a regular basis, yet no one seems to understand what it is they're suggesting and think they're fixing things. That may not be problems. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how Nicaragua's currency system works and why cryptocurrency isn't breaking in, even though it is completely legal and completely accepted. Check the maps. We're a green country where we take crypto without any problem right after that bump. There's so many sales pitches out there of people trying to convince you to hop on the crypto bang bandwagon that it might lead you to believe that they're in a bit of panic and hope that they can fool other people into getting into the cryptocurrency game so that they can cash out and escape. It's called the greatest fool game and actually that's exactly what's happening. When you hear someone tell you about how great cryptocurrency is and how it's going to solve things, what you should hear, as you should with any time that someone is trying to sell you a investment of some sort or another, or especially when they're trying to sell you something that isn't an investment as if it were one, is what you should hear is they must have a position that they're anxious to get out of and they're trying to cash out. Because if they actually believed in it and thought that it was a long-term hold, the last thing they would want to do is get you into it as well. That would water down their position. Position, they would want to keep you out of it. That's the nature of investing. You don't want other people to find out about the good things because you'll lose them. So all these people, all these websites that are pushing, pushing, pushing on whatever particular thing, it's because they need to sell right? Especially if it's a limited uh, a quantity item. Some things like the stock market, there's essentially unlimited amount. If you just keep investing, they'll make new companies, they'll grow companies. But if you're investing in gold or Bitcoin, they can't make more just because you're paying for more. So the price goes up so the people who've already bought can cash out and leave you holding the bag. And that is the entire reason, the only reason that someone would push you towards cryptocurrency. So hear that when someone is trying to tell you it's such a great idea. Now, when you're living here in Nicaragua, most of the time you're not gonna hear much about it because most people know that it doesn't make much sense and there's no reason to bring it up, but there's a certain number of people who are always out trying to make a buck and they want you to believe that cryptocurrency is going to solve all of Nicaragua's problems. The thing that's really interesting here, and this is the key, is that they don't mention what these problems are. And I've asked a number of people exactly what about cryptocurrency is going to make something better in Nicaragua. And consistently, the answer is crickets. There's nothing that they're trying to solve. No one's actually identified a problem with the banking system here in Nicaragua. They just imagine that there must be one, or more importantly, imagine that you are not going to think critically and say, wait, is there a problem to fix? And then realize that they made it up. If you're coming from North America, there's a certain amount of just the way that banks work that you're used to. And it's easy to think that in the rest of the world, banks work that way. And trust me, I am not trying to say that the U.S. has a bad banking system and that other places have a good banking system. I'm just saying that the U.S. has a banking system that is tuned to the needs of Americans and Nicaragua has a banking system tuned to the needs of Nicaraguans and that they both tend to work pretty well in their own places, even though they work relatively differently. Now, they don't work really that differently under the hood. It's more in how they interface with clients. In the United States, it's easy to get into a bank and go talk to someone, but it's also easy to not need to. In Nicaragua, it's a pain to get into the bank. You're often going to wait in a long line, and you often need to. That part is not great. But you're not going to solve that by using Bitcoin because you still have to go through the banking system just the same. So that doesn't really change anything. The place where you generally want to have Bitcoin, if you're in North America, is, or something like it, right, other cryptocurrencies, but Bitcoin is what people people often specifically mention because they're trying to sell their Bitcoin positions is that uh, Bitcoin, in theory, allows you to do things that replace, say, Venmo or PayPal, things like that, with a near zero transaction or zero friction transaction uh, mechanism. So if I need to pay you and I can do so with Bitcoin, that works out really well because I don't have to pay a third party intermediary in order to do that transaction. And since I can easily obtain Bitcoins and you can easily sell Bitcoins, then the system works well. But this is key. Notice it's only valuable if I can get and you can remove Bitcoins from yourself. None of us want to have Bitcoins. Having a currency fundamentally 
is nuts. No one wants to have money. They want the things that money can buy. So the purpose is to be able to buy something with it. And in the United States, if I'm able to pay you with Bitcoin, that suggests you can pay someone else. So if I can pay you and you can pay someone else and they can pay someone else, then potentially we have three or four or five interactions that are able to happen without having additional friction. And the overhead of all those transactions goes away. And we get a little bit more money out of it for ourselves rather than paying the banks for all those transactions. Sound good? Yeah, it is actually. And it kind of works like cash. If I'd have handed you cash and you'd have handed, oh wait, it is cash, right? Bitcoin is called coin for a reason. It's cash. It's not working like a bank account. It works like cash. That's an important tip. So when you're thinking about Bitcoin, think about how easy it is to move cash around. And obviously, services like PayPal and Venmo work because they're attempting to give you a semi-bank account mechanism to replace cash. So that's why they do what they do and why they work the way that they work. Bitcoin actually is cash, but one that you can do remotely. So that's legitimately cool. We really like that. So that's something, if you had physical cash, Bitcoin's going to trump that no problem. But if you're in person, there's no way to make Bitcoin work as well as actual cash. It's just way too easy to hand someone a fiver and get a hot dog. There's no way that you're gonna do anything with Bitcoin if you have to so much as pull a phone out of your pocket and do the transaction, even if it's just tapping a phone and that's it, it's so easy, still more work, right? And cash essentially can't be traced, but Bitcoin is extremely traceable. Everything you do is more traceable than anything else you're used to. So it's not something that people generally like once they find out that governments and private organizations can see every single thing they do all the time, frequency, like every single little detail. That's not nice. So people don't like that once they realize. So the majority of people using Bitcoin, more or less by definition, are people who don't understand it. Once you understand it, you don't want to use it. So you have a market of people who are just confused about Bitcoin. It's not a great way to build the foundation of an economy, right? Where normal money is used by everybody, and especially by people who really understand money, Bitcoin really encourages people who understand money to stay away from it, and people who are emotionally either trying to manipulate people or have been manipulated to kind of glom on to it. Now, I'm not saying everyone who uses it is like that, but it really encourages that group and scares others away. And since it doesn't carry a lot of value, you get a lot of that. Meet people who use Bitcoin, and you're generally going to get people people who aren't thinking clearly about money. Have any conversation with someone about Bitcoin and they're unable to have a rational conversation about money in most circumstances. We had a conversation just the other night and the person trying to make Bitcoin sound viable claimed that the dollar had collapsed and was no longer able to buy food with it. He said 99% of the value of the US dollar was gone, even though the dollar technically is up, not down. So not only has it not lost 99% of its value, it's up something like five to 10%, the exact opposite of what he was claiming. So it made absolutely no sense. And other people who were in on the conversation were like, um, I use US dollars today. They worked the same as always. What do you mean 99% of it's gone? The dollar isn't suddenly worth the equivalent of a penny a couple days ago. What are you talking about? But that was the claim he tried to make to try to make Bitcoin sound like it was stable. He's like, Bitcoin's more stable than any other currency in the world. But specifically, one of the problems with it is its volatility. So you get these crazy conversations. And seriously, if you ever talk to someone who's trying to sell you on Bitcoin, just try to get them to talk about money. Once they start explaining things, most of the time, they can't hide the fact that they've become emotionally tied to whatever it is they're trying to sell or panicky about something they're trying to avoid. And they have no rational means of thinking about the money. They believe that money is no longer viable. They think that fiat currencies don't work. They think gold standards work, like all kinds of weird fringe theories that come from scammers start to emerge. And it generally takes layers of these to add up to something like Bitcoin seeming like it's going to make sense. The whole idea of blockchain is fantastic and cryptocurrencies are a wonderful idea. And there are ones that are not Bitcoin that are far better, but you need wide adoption before they really become useful. Or you have an exchange mechanism that's just a few hundred people agreeing to not screw each other over all in a mechanism where they're trying to screw each other over. It's not a great scene. Someone's going to be left holding the bag in a lot of these cases because there's nothing behind the scenes. If you really want to see this stuff go crazy, look at NFTs, right? How many people lost everything and own nothing? Literally, you're buying nothing. It's the most meaningless thing that there could ever be. And yet it's a hot thing because it's easy to trick people when it comes to technology. Imagine what's going to happen when AI takes over and looks at these things and realizes that there are entire monetary mechanisms of things that don't exist. 
that's going to force a rationalization on the market that is going to be so devastating to people who are carrying monetary units that have no value. It's going to be quite the reckoning, and that is almost guaranteed to be coming. It doesn't require some person getting into power and saying, well, I'm going to convince the world that these things don't work. The AI is going to push a rationalization on the market simply because the trading mechanisms are going to not be able to be emotionally manipulated to each other, and the main trading systems are going to abandon those monetary units because they don't make sense. So that is something that's essentially guaranteed, or they're going to use them in a very predictable way, or simply cause them to fluctuate in a semi-predictable way to make it for anyone else that tries to use them that they're guaranteed to lose, because that's how AI works, right? Once it's manipulating the market, you are going to lose, because it can manipulate it faster than you. It's not that it's smarter than you, it's just faster and more diligent. Now, because of the way the U.S. market works, generally there's a big pain if you need to move money from one person to another. Totally understand. And if you're coming from that market, you may imagine that this is something that the rest of the world faces. But the U.S. has a lot more controls on these things and a lot more costs because there's just a lot more money in the system. So the need to have things be frictionless just doesn't exactly exist. And the U.S. has so many different mechanisms for paying people that uh, generally there's always something that will work for you. It's just that there's a wide variety. When you come to other places, and Nicaragua is a great example, we don't have this big complex banking infrastructure like the U.S. We're just not that big of a place. So instead, we have a small number of banks that are all able to talk to each other, and more importantly, they each have branches all over the place, much in the way that here in Nicaragua, we only have two cell carriers, and instead of talking to each other, they simply expect everyone, if you want to be able to call each other, to get a SIM card from both carriers and deal with it that way. But Basically, no one wants to do that. Both carriers basically give out numbers that are used for nothing, and everyone uses the internet like the modern world that we live in and talks to each other over things like WhatsApp and completely bypasses the legacy phone system altogether. There's no need for it. Well, banking works a little bit in the same way. Sure, the banks do talk to each other, and you can make transfers between banks, but those transactions are expensive and difficult and risky, and the banks don't want to make them, and why would you? Instead, they have agents all all over the country. You can go to any little community and there will be an agent that handles all the banks. I can go right up the street to the Super Express and they handle Lafise and BAC and Banpro and uh, Fincosa and others. And I can just go in. And if I want to move money in the way that people move money here, I can simply walk into the bank, go up to the teller and say, here's X amount of money. Please give it to this account. And instantly that money is in their account and they're good to go. It's just like the uh, cryptocurrency transfers, except it happens instantly without the need for any special technology. I don't have to have a working phone or anything, and it has no overhead whatsoever. I mean, quite literally, it is easier for me to go and send money to 20 people than it is for you to just open a wallet with Bitcoin. The difference in friction is unbelievable. And I'm not saying Bitcoin is hard. I'm saying that this is so easy and has no cost overhead that it's really hard to imagine a world where you would want to ever try to replace this. Of all the things in society, this is something that Nicaragua has nailed. It is so, such a good working system, and it's so basic. There's just only a few banks, so all the banks are represented everywhere. Most people have accounts in multiple places, and because we're a multi-currency country, most people have accounts in multiple currencies. So you just walk in anywhere, and here you go. You're good to go. It's really, really easy. Now, I know people talk about uh, cryptocurrency up in El Salvador, and they say, well, there's, there's good adoption because so many people have wallets, but wallets are like wallets, right? It's not uh, like a bank account. It is like having a digital wallet. That's why they call it a digital wallet, right? So if you ask how many people have wallets or can carry U.S. cash in El Salvador, well, it's 100%. Every single person can and does carry U.S. currency. How many of those people carry cryptocurrency? Well, a good number, but nothing close to what carries U.S. currency. And then in order to manipulate people, to make them feel, because people get confused about currency, no one compares that. What they say instead is, well, compare how many people have crypto wallets and compare that to how many people have bank accounts. Well, but bank accounts could be for dollars or cryptocurrency. So it's not a comparable thing. Cryptocurrency wallets are just like dollar wallets, just one's digital and one is analog, and that's fine or physical. But the bank account could be for either. So if there's a certain lack of people who have uh, bank accounts for dollars and an even greater lack of people who have bank accounts for crypto, it's just reinforcing in both case, cases. The wallets are much more likely to be in dollars than crypto. The bank accounts are almost all in dollars basically none in crypto. 
Now, you can argue that crypto does quite a bit to reduce the need to have bank accounts, and that's why people don't have bank accounts in those currencies. That's reasonable, uh, right? Like, that does make sense to some degree, but there's a lot of reasons why you still want a bank. There's a lot of protections and assurances that even if you can work in cash, you don't want to. You want to have banks to handle things. That goes the same for crypto as it does for physical money, for Effectivo. And so... Yeah, it kind of makes sense, but it doesn't really. But when you're making the comparison, you have to understand in order to be able to talk about crypto, you have to understand what is a wallet versus what is a bank account and that those things are not weirdly different. They are still both mechanisms still exist in the crypto world here in Nicaragua. What would you do with that crypto wallet? You already have the ability to do this really low friction banking. And then we also have digital wallets. So we have something just like a crypto wallet, but we don't have to have a cryptocurrency in it. We can use dollars or Cordoba. So we have dual currencies just like El Salvador, but both of ours have digital wallets. Unlike El Salvador, where apparently only one of them does, and we have bank accounts for both types of currencies. So we can do wallet-to-wallet -wallet transfers, wallet-to-bank transfers, bank-to-wallet transfers, and cash-to-bank transfers, and cash-to-wallet transfers. So we're able to do all of these things. Whether you have a phone, whether your phone currently has a charge, whether you've managed to maintain the key to your wallet or not, whether you have a bank account or not, all of these things work all over the place. The ability to do no cost, zero overhead, immediate transfers of any type of money to any type of money is so easy here in Nicaragua that it's really amazing, but it's worth looking at that so many people come in to try to sell us on Bitcoin because it's a regular thing. And people say, this is going to revitalize the country. It's going to do all these things, yet they can't come up with a single thing that would make it better. And they ignore, this is the key, they ignore the fact that Nicaragua has no blockages on cryptocurrency. It is completely a allowed. You're allowed to use Bitcoin right now. It's not an official government currency, but you can use it right this second for anything that you want. You can accept it anywhere you want. You can spend it anywhere you want. The only thing is, do people believe it has value? Has it proven to be valuable here? And the answer is universally no. Nobody thinks it makes sense. They all think you're crazy for trying to do so. It just doesn't have value. So one of the things that people like to try to say that crypto could make easier is remittances. And what that is, is when you have someone from your country like Nicaragua and they go abroad to somewhere like the United States and they work there and they send money back home, that's called a remittance. And it's a big thing all throughout Latin America. Tons of the money that comes into different countries comes in through remittance. That makes sense. And it's important to understand that this is a big part of the ecosystem. In the US, you may not think about this ever, but in some place like Nicaragua, it's an everyday thing. So wouldn't cryptocurrency make that much easier? Well, in theory, if you were allowed to simply hand large amounts of cash to someone across a border, then yes, it would make sense. But you're not allowed to, so it ends up not making sense for two reasons. One is that you're simply not allowed to do it. If you're moving any large amount of money, remember, Bitcoin is monitored just like anything else. And in fact, more than most things. So you have to obey money laundering laws and you have to go through a bunch of mechanisms. And if you do that without a bank, it gets much, much harder and gets a lot more scrutiny. So Bitcoin defeats all those things. It makes you have to work harder and be looked at more and exposes you more for trying to move money around. So both you as the person sending it and the person who's receiving it could get in a lot of trouble because you may not know all all the money laundering declarations you need to make, but a bank would handle that for you. The second thing is that if you're a person doing this, you already have really simple, easy remittance programs that exist, and it's not a challenge. We don't have this thing where remittances can't get into the country. That's not a thing. We also have a problem that businesses can't use those mechanisms, but they can't use Bitcoin either. Trust me, I'm an international business. I work all over the world. We would love to be able to use Bitcoin and just send money to people, but they're not allowed to do that. They have to show provenance of where their money came from. We have to show provenance of where money is going. If we were to take corporate money and put it into Bitcoin and send it somewhere, we have to be able to show where it went. We will get audited. And I don't mean audited like the IRS coming down to tax you. I mean, you get audited by the money laundering system immediately because it's coming out of your at some point it's being sourced by the business that stuff has to be reported and they know where it's going well they need on the other side to know where it's come in from and where it's going there and so you end up with a nightmare of heavy regulations and they are tracking you and remember bitcoin totally exposes what you're doing you're not hiding this and as a business you don't want to be hiding it that is money laundering right the last thing you want to do is actually money launder the second last thing you want to do is look like you're money laundering right what you want to do is not money launder and 
and look like you're not money laundering. That's ideal, right? So doing things that flag you as looking like it and then may actually cause you to do it by accident, not a great way to go. We have looked into this extensively across many different countries and Bitcoin, even though it's accepted in all the countries we're talking about, doesn't work. It doesn't solve any problems. We've never come up with a way where we could actually use it without going to jail. And that's not a great outcome. So as a business, the idea that you can make international payments using it just doesn't add up. And if you had a business partner and they were like, well, I'll take Bitcoin and you take Bitcoin and we're not going to expose it to anyone. We're going to do our best to keep it secret. And if you could pull that off, it's still pointless because there's no reason to use Bitcoin. If you trust someone to do that, just keep a ledger of what you each owe each other and you know, settle up at the end, that will work better than Bitcoin, far easier for you, far easier for everyone and gets you around that money laundering because you're not actually moving money around. With Bitcoin, you could end up moving trillions around because of a glitch in a computer and then find out later that you owe insane amounts of taxes because you moved money back and forth a whole bunch uh, because you thought there was no overhead. And so you did it as like an API and just bad things can happen. You don't want to be doing that unless you know exactly what you're doing. But for normal people, there's already remittance programs that make it so easy, Bitcoin again solves nothing. It might create problems. In some cases, it might work as well as what's already there, but at best, you're just recreating the wheel. So the th reason that I want to point this out, one, is I don't want you guys being tricked by Bitcoin scammers, and they're everywhere, even here in Nicaragua, and they use Nicaragua seemingly to not have Bitcoin because it has a more rational currency system as being that there's a way to bring it here and solve problems. They're making up fake problems or they're pretending that there's problems and they're implying that Nicaragua doesn't accept Bitcoin today when it does. So they're really layering and layering a story to try to trick you. But the other thing is, and I have some videos on this that we did pretty recently, where it is this trend of North Americans especially, but it could be people coming from anywhere, who come to places like Nicaragua. They perceive this is the third world. People must be backwards. I must be brilliant. I must have all the answers. My country has solved these things, which it has not at all, and come here and say, Ah, oh, I'm this North American and I have heard about this one interesting thing that I was scammed on and I'm sure it's going to fix your problems and pretend that, you know, people here like, as if we didn't know what Bitcoin was, like we haven't looked into this, that the government hasn't looked into this, that the banks hasn't looked into this, that the people haven't looked into this, that all of the Nicaraguans doing remittances haven't discussed whether or not this would work. If every business that hasn't worked internationally hasn't looked into this, trust me, every single person out there has done this and knows why it doesn't work. And when you come from North America, there's the same, it's the same thing where you have this reaction like, oh, I'm about to show up in a new country. I bet I'm the first American who's ever thought of having a margarita bar and tacos on the beach. No one's ever thought of this. It's brilliant. And then you get here and you do it and you realize nothing is more common. There's more likely to open a margarita bar with tacos on the beach than it is to be a successful expat for more than six months. Every single person has the exact same vision. Not most, not 80%, 99.9%. And at least 80% of those somehow think they thought of it rather than realizing that every rom-com that has ever shown a beach shows white people having the same concept. Like you grew up with this as the dream and it's always the dream to go to paradise, find the most amazing vacation location, pretend that no one else has found it. That doesn't exist. And then pretend that you invented the concept of a taco bar. That is the most common thing you've ever seen and then pretend that you are the first person who ever went on vacation and solved this problem, and then pretend that it could be profitable. There's so many layers of implausible in that story to get people, but yet you live in a place like Nicaragua and every potential person who's going to move here is like, okay, I understand that there's like, everyone fails at business. This is really hard. It's a different market. I know nothing about it, but surely a beach bar with tacos and margaritas would be a gold mine. I'll be a millionaire in a year. I've never had a business before. I've never run a restaurant. I don't know what it takes to get a liquor license. I'm not sure I'm going to stay in the country. I don't know how to speak Spanish, but I'm sure that there's a huge market of untapped margaritas on the beach. I don't know what would make people think this, yet everyone does. And the same thing with Bitcoin. I, I just imagine that I'm going into this enormous country that's right next door to the only country in the world that takes Bitcoin. It's not really true, there's two now. And, and 
that, that uses it as, a, as an official currency, I should say, tons take it, right? And everybody ignores that because they're trying to make a sales pitch. And that, that everybody has talked about and everybody has laughed at. And it is a big joke how people think that this would somehow solve something. And it's a big joke how America's Americans can't figure out that the banks work here in a really simple way and there isn't something to solve. I'm going to solve the problems I've not even identified with by coming up with a random solution that I can't even describe how it works. Really think about that. And yet that is what happens. So this is, the, this is a great example of exactly the be careful coming to a new country and bringing solutions when you're a foreigner. Like the chances that you're going to bring a solution to a country is almost zero. It doesn't matter that you're coming from the U.S. to Nicaragua. It could be the other way around. Nicaraguans going to the U.S. Imagine a Nicaraguan going to the U.S. and going, oh, Americans, they haven't figured out how to bank yet. All they need is uh, to put a branch of every single bank in every single mini mart, and it'll be it'll be great, and, and banking will be solved. And Americans will be like, that wouldn't work here for, and they could spend all day listing the reasons why that wouldn't work. And they'd be like, do you think Americans never thought of putting bank branches in mini marts? Of course we did. And one millisecond later, we didn't move forward with it because it's a terrible idea in the U.S. But in Nicaragua, it's the best idea ever, right? So Nicaraguans can't go to the U.S. and bring a little bit of Nicaragua know-how and solve America's problems, except for how to make good Gallo Pinto. That would solve a lot of America's problems. But And likewise, Americans can't come to Nicaragua and bring Nic American know-how and just solve Nicaraguan problems. In fact, it's so extreme that neither party can go to the other's country and identify the problems. You don't even know what the problems are that you're trying to solve or that they're trying to solve. And this is why I can't add anything to Nicaragua because I don't have enough understanding of all the different pieces to provide meaningful uh, identify, identification, identify, identification of what the problems are. And I certainly can't provide the solution because there's 7 million people who've all been dealing with these problems longer. They know exactly what the problem is. They know it's been tried historically. They know what works, what doesn't. And they can easily watch TV or just engage their brains and think about how other countries do this. And let's be honest, the United States doesn't use Bitcoin either because it doesn't make sense even there where it makes way more sense than here. Given how much better Bitcoin is in the United States than in Nicaragua because of just the way the banks work, why hasn't it been adopted there? Because it doesn't make sense. I'm an American. Is there something I can use Bitcoin for practically in the US? Absolutely not. It's useless. There's a reason I don't have a wallet. I've had people offer to give me money if only I would open a Bitcoin wallet. And honestly, it is not worth my time to open a wallet. It's that basic. That's how useless Bitcoin is. If you love it and you want to play with it, nothing wrong with that. It's a currency. I don't know why anyone would be passionate about a currency. That fundamentally, I think, indicates something's wrong, right? Why would anyone find a currency something to be emotional about? Really step back and question that, right? It is not meant to be that. Currency is meant to be a tool of transfer between exciting things. I did labor for someone. That was exciting. I worked hard and they want to reward me for my labor. That's exciting. I want to turn that reward into a new set of shoes. That's exciting, right? The work is exciting. The shoes are exciting. All the in-between is supposed to be a necessary ends to a means. But if you stop worrying about your work and you stop worrying about the shoes and you only worry about the ability to hand the arbitrary money back and forth that has no intrinsic value and no intrinsic interest on its own, that's when you really should step back and be like, why? Why am I being passionate about this? I should, no one should ever, 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 ever care about currency. It is only for transferring between one thing you care about and another thing you care about. The, in, the intent of currency is that it is a no-care mechanism. You would never want, you'd never desire currency. You just desire what gives you currency, and you desire what currency can buy. But you never want to desire the currency. That's like I would see a therapist. And I don't mean that as a joke. I mean, that's an actual, the moment you feel an emotional compulsion for a currency, seriously see a therapist. Something's wrong. That's the brain should never emotionally glom on to something of that nature with an emotional attachment. Now, having an attachment to like, I dislike governments and government control and I want an independent mechanism to prevail, that, okay. And, oh, I don't like this government and I perceive, but let's be honest, currencies don't represent governments. You 
people like as part of the sales pitch for Bitcoin to give that feeling so that people can get upset with a government or perceive a government problem and then perceive their money failing somehow because of that. Those are disconnected things. And so it's a way to manipulate people again. But still, there really should be an emotional detachment from your currency. It's just not a really smart way to have your brain look at the world. And I realize that we're irrational creatures. And that's why you need therapists in a lot of cases is because we are ultimately irrational and we can't identify what is good and bad for us. And sometimes we need someone to help us work through our trauma or our misconceptions or our baggage and figure out why we're projecting this fear of American currency, why we're projecting a uh, uh, an emotional attachment as if it's a caregiver or a child to a, a cryptocurrency that just fundamentally is not healthy and it's something that I really actually honestly suggest that people see to seek out professional help because there is something much deeper causing a need to to uh, you know project this emotional attachment onto money Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Maybe you can do it with cryptocurrency. I have no idea how you would do that, but it definitely takes credit cards. I will see all of you tomorrow.